Hi everybody, so in video 1931 we made this thing which is our generator section from our wind turbine. Now I didn't release the files in 1931 because the case wasn't quite long enough and I'd put the exit hole here which is a bit irritating. So I've now finished that design and the Tinkercad STL files are available and the link is in the description in the bottom. Incidentally, if you do jump onto Tinkercad with those files you can adapt them yourself to be anything you want to be. Now full details are in video 1931 but it is basically three serpentine coils arranged around a bunch of neodymium magnets like that and we have six exit wires so we need to rectify what's coming out of there put it under load and give it a test to do that I've got this massive chunky cog that I'm going to put onto there so I'm going to put that on there and put rectifiers on there okay that's that's it I mean you can have choices here eh? one way which is the way I've chosen to do is take each individual coil and rectify it using this rectification circuit the other way is to take all of the coils together and rectify it as three phase using this rectification circuit now I've done each coil separately because to be brutally honest I don't quite know what I'm going to do with this in which uh, I mean I know what I'm going to do with it I'm going to stick it in a wind turbine what I mean is electrically what I'm going to do with it because on here I've got all my positives coming out from that rectification circuit I showed you and on here I've got my negatives so I've rectified each coil individually to give me three positives and three negatives you don't need to do that you can do it as all three coils rectified in a three phase rectifier circuit to get one positive and one negative. The reason I've done it like this is because if I join those up in parallel, I'll add the amps. If I join them up in series, what I'll do is add the volts. So I could join my positive to negative, positive to negative, and take my positive and negative out here, and they will be in series. Or I can take all of the positives out, all of the negatives out, and they'll be in parallel. It just depends what I want to actually power with it. Now I'm going to connect this up in series and we're going to give it a spin with an LED. This LED takes about 20 volts or so to turn on. Okay, so here's my positive and we can stick it onto the positive like that. Now obviously the negative comes out of the other side and we can take the negative To the other side, positive. Then we take that negative to the other side, positive. And then we take our negative out. So what we've done is connected this in series. So that's now connected in series and the voltage output of all the coils we've had together and it'll be some crazy voltage. So let's give it a spin. I've got the meter here. We'll see what kind of voltage we get out of it. What are we getting, Lou? Oh, 28. 28? 29? 31. <laughs> there you go. So we get some super voltage out of it just by spinning it. Now this, has a turn on voltage of around about 20, 25 volts. So instead of connecting it to the meter, we connect it to our LED, we should be able to get that LED to light. And so we're getting real power out because it's doing some work. <laughs> and there you go, lighting an LED. <laughs> Here is a BK precision calibrated load. What that does is sets a load on this and reads the volts and the amps at the same time. So I've connected it up, I've given a 100 ohm load because it's about 80 ohms resistance coils and um, we're going to read the volts and the amps here and see what we actually get. So it's going to be a bit difficult because I have to spin it by hand. So I'm getting 22, 26 volts, and when I get that, I'm getting about 100 milliamps or so. So something around about that, I did see 150. That's what we're getting from it. Okay, so we got a couple of watts out of that spinning it by hand, more or less. I mean, it's a bit equivocal, but it was really, really easy to do that. So I've made a nice little cap to protect all the electronics. There you go. 
And what we need now is the gearing system. And you can bet your bottom dollar what I'm going to be using is this, which is a planetary gear system that we developed in a previous video. And we can stack that up to create whatever gear ratio we want. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.